Welcome to another episode of Cyber Masters with Ed Notella and my lovely co-host Rick Navone. Say I just hi. Became lovely. Of course, yes. Well, yeah. look at him. How could you not say lovely? Yeah. And yeah. our super special guest, Sean Hendrickson. Hi. How you doing? And uh, very excited to have Sean, a really welcome to the show, man. Thanks, welcome man. to the I show. Uh, Glad to we, be here. We have some interesting subjects. If you've been watching so far. We're going to be talking about some interesting cyber news. Um, this term prejacking, that's a, a new term that came out. We should all know what that is. Um, we'll be talking about the um, cybersecurity telethon. Um, telethon, the hackathon. Yeah. We could still call it a telethon, but uh, it's a hackathon. So they had one just a couple months ago, and literally a million dollars plus was given out in prizes. It's really amazing, right? Yes. And uh, why do these things take place? It's really encouraging technology. Imagine kids getting together, hacking systems for money. Uh, very interesting stuff there. Right, showing some of the bigger companies their vulnerabilities that they may not have known that they had. Yes, it's absolutely. And imagine if a bunch of kids in a competition could do it, maybe these companies should kind of yeah. do something about it, right? Fix it. Should we, uh, Fix should we it discuss stuff? how Sean came to being on the show, oh, my, absolutely. my relationship with him? Absolutely. We'll get to that in a moment. We're then going to be talking about the James Webb Telescope, something people are really not aware of what it's doing. Uh, just a briefing on that. Very interesting. And in coordination with that, we're talking about a little bit of the uh, UFO hearings that have been taking place and where that's going. You know, where where does that take place? But please, Rick, uh, introduce yourself again, and please tell us about your excellent relationship with Sean and your well, guests. So everybody uh, that's been watching the show knows my name's Rick Navone, um, technologist at large, uh, and big and small. And my really, I'm really, big, he's small. No, no, my, my, my <laughs> dear, dear friend, friend of many, many years, Sean Hendrickson. Uh, Hi, who I met, God, when was it, like 93, 94, um, back at Computer Career Center? 94, 95, Right around, around the that, same yeah. time I met uh, Brian, who yes. was on the show a couple of weeks ago. And they both had skinny leather ties, if you remember we the did. look. And Capizios. <laughs> and Capizios. 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 Right, both of you guys, yeah. anyway. Yeah. You like Joe Jackson. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the thing was, uh, the thing that I should tell the audience is that you know, Sean and I have had a, a, a very close friendship that started in uh, in and around IT and and studying for our certifications, our early jobs, and we kept in touch through the years. And I've said many times on this show, I've mentioned Sean. Uh, Sean was a desktop technologist uh, that worked at a major law firm in New York City. He now works at a major news, news agency in New York City. And his, his job title switched around a little bit. And, you know, we don't like to talk about our jobs, like, you know, on the show. But uh, Sean Snell is a cybersecurity expert. That's what he does. So all you hackers in China, you should just, like, point your hacking tools right at him now. Great. Now I'm in trouble. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, thanks for putting me out there publicly like that. Not, not at all, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, something you should know. Um, I use an alias. Um, you have, I've had previous, sh previous shows about using an alias being a very positive thing. Uh, people who know me know I'm using an alias. Um, you have to be super conscious of security today. Um, we're able to speak with everybody here. We don't have to disclose details, uh, but can certainly tell you about our amazing experiences. Of course, some employers and our clients don't necessarily want us to mention any specifics, which is why I sometimes even scramble the right. information or alter in some way to protect the innocent, like they used to say in the 80s TV shows. Right? Meanwhile, yeah. I just put my name out there like an idiot. It's okay. And to remind out there, too. Yes, just yes. Me, so well, a lot. Now, I appreciate we're out there together, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one knows whether it's an alias or not, so. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Is it my real name? Is it not? <laughs> Nobody knows. Does he or doesn't he? Um, just want to say, uh, please, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your life and yeah, sure. what you've um, been through, well, you know, what makes you such a cyber master? Uh, like Rick said, I met him in, uh, in computer school. We went to a uh, technology school called Computer Career Centers. It was back in the mid-90s and, um, you know, it was, a, it was a very intense program that we went through. So we all kind of had that kinship being that we all knew what we were going through at that point mm -hmm. and how intense it was. Absolutely. Most of us were working full-time jobs at the same time. Yeah. Um, so now you were, you were learning what Windows and networking. We were learning Windows, Windows. NT was all the rage. Uh, yeah. Wow. Netware, Novell. Netware, Novell, mm -hmm. Netware was Novell, Netware. 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 and Unix. Yeah, and Unix. So we were getting a, a bit of everything. In there. <coughs> yeah, Linux really is as like a brand really hadn't even been broken out yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 
So uh, we were getting our hands on everything. Uh, the, the thing about that school, which really made it different from other schools that I looked at, is that more than 60% was hands-on. Yep. Oh, very so nice. you would get lecture yeah. and then you would go right into lab and yep. then you would spend the rest of the night doing labs. So it was equal labs together. or even more labs? Even in more. Class? Yeah, it was, it was even more. Even more. So like, like more of the time. I used to, um, you know you know me, I was an instructor there. Yeah. And you know how I can talk. Yeah, okay? yeah. And I was told <laughs> that, no, you, you can't do lectures for so long. You had to like break it into, you know. Well, well uh, thank goodness. I'd yeah, yeah, like yeah. Because you, you, know, you don't want well, me talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But no, but I mean, that, what a great structure. You yes. have the reverse to that. It was yeah. a great structure. And I'll tell you why. Because they also let you fail, right? So one of the reasons that you had so much time with the hands-on mm. is that not only did you were you learning how to build it correctly, mm. but they would let you fail, let you make mistakes, and then try to figure out how to get out of those mistakes. Absolutely. Yes. And redo it so it was correct. Yeah. Which is what senior engineers want. Right, exactly. Don't, don't tell them exactly what you do, but what have you, steps have you taken, I'll take you to the next level. Exactly. You want to be that kind of a technology. And when it yes. breaks, what did you do to get it back working? You know, like, it, 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 to break down that whole troubleshooting methodology for students to learn troubleshooting where they may not even really understand that yet. Yes, right? what is it exactly? Yeah. And it was good. It was good to learn there as opposed to on somebody's network as well, mm -hmm. right? So true, even though true. most of us, as we were going through the program, I'll give you an example. I passed my CNA for, for NetWare. It was in, NetWare. Uh, NetWare Novell was CNA. I believe it was 412. Okay. All right. So that's, I'm okay. dating myself. I, I know right? exactly. It was one of the last versions. So I mean, they came out with five. No, I just want to say that I'm dating myself also, but it was version 411 that was Y2K compliant. It was 411. Yes, that's right. 412 Actually, was the revision. It was, it was that's, right. <laughs> that's right. Sorry, I do believe it was 411. <laughs> so when I, as soon as I certified and they made that, too. I literally walked into my job the next day and I quit on the mm -hmm. spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember. Because I knew if I didn't do that, I wouldn't put myself out into the mm -hmm. field because mm -hmm. I, was, I was comfortable where I was at. Mm -hmm. I knew the job that very was well. Canon, right? That was actually Home Depot. And then oh, I went to Nikon. Nikon. Was my Depot. First I was, Nikon. I was close. It was Always my first job in the IT field. First job. Okay. What, what was it? A, a technician job? What was it? It was a technician job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what did you do? Install computers? Worked as a... Install computers. Is it apprentice? Uh, no. No. They put me right in as a technologist. So I was doing a lot of desktop support and then user support right off the bat. Yeah. And it was interesting. Um, I had originally hesitated on the job. Mm -hmm. And the company, the headhunting agency I was working with, threw somebody else in there who was okay. what they called a paper c &E. I think you guys uh, talked about paper. Yeah, someone yeah. who does great on tests. That's basically someone who can pass a test but doesn't really know so how to apply himself. So this guy had walked himself. into the job, and uh, when he walked into the network room with the network administrator, the first thing he did is he looked at the rack with all the wires plugged into it and asked him, what is that? Oh, man. So the administrator kicked him out right away, and then they put me in the next day to interview with him. And as soon as I walked in, the first question out of his mouth was, do you know what those are? And I turned to him and said, yeah, those are the Ethernet concentrators. He goes, okay, your desk is outside. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so you're raising a super important question, right? Because I've had this conversation with, a, with, with someone today. Many kids go to school and learn computers and have a background of desktop, all that. Many kids are going to school and are learning vocabulary for their time they're in college. Then you throw them in front of a product, don't even know what it looks like or how to plug it in. That's correct. Keep in mind, and parents out there paying for these schools, are these kids learning vocabulary or are they learning how to do stuff? That's a great point, Ed. It, sir. it is a great point, and I'll tell you one of the things I ask when I'm doing interviews, uh, Ed and Rick, the first thing I ask a potential candidate is, what's your network at home like? Because if you're doing it at home, I know look like? that you're trying to stay ahead. Well, you're trying to keep up. You're practicing. You're that's for the younger crowd. But that's mm -hmm. one of the things. Mm -hmm. Well, not, not even mm -hmm. more senior people. You don't want them always working and learning on your network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that, well, and that keeping their true. skills up it, on your network at that moment. It's really funny you bring that up. And, and Do I you work wanted, in production? Or I just wanted production? to like you know make a point here. Mm -hmm. That's like my network at home is as simple. As you could ever imagine. I didn't um, say it had to no, be no, complicated. I'm, I'm saying it's, it's simple. It's it's not running anything special. I I have 
like very simple virtualization on my own laptop. I've got a separate computer that's running VMware, but that's it. But it's still something that you can learn against. And you Correct. can put new with technology that, against. Death, but and you can be bleeding edge on your time, thank not you. the company's time. But when time. I tell you, thank like you. my girlfriend you got me one of those Alexa, those uh, Echo Dots, mm -hmm. right? And I keep it unplugged. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but, but but hold on, hold on. Let's just stay on subject for a moment because Sean's making a, 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 the most important point. When I was going to school for computers, I was so far entrenched in it that the seven eight hours I spent at school was smaller than my personal time. Oh yeah, yeah. I oh. wasn't doing it because I was trying to excel. I was having a blast. Yeah, doing everything <laughs> I could. School became secondary to my lessons because I was into it. If you're going and forcing yourself to learn and eat the spinach and you don't like it, oh, let me just at least learn the vocabulary. It's, forget it. Stop right there. Yeah, Gentlemen. because we're going to know. We're going to know right away. It's not going to take more than a couple of questions to know. Are you really into this? Do you know what you're talking about? Have you experienced it? Or are you just trying to fool me? How does a parent know? How does a parent know what their child is going through? They've paid thirty thousand dollars for school. At least they're they're now in their third year. How do they know whether they understand it or just learning the vocabulary only? Man, that's a good question. Unless they're in the industry, they can't possibly know. Exactly. So so parents need to really think about this risk factor because we've interviewed. Uh, before I say that, let, let me introduce Scott here, who's our engineer, Scott and, the engineer. and a very important part of the show, and uh, become a friend of ours. Here, yeah, I want to pull you up and just say a couple of words there. That's Scott, um, the um, right a very accomplished right. individual who's been in broadcasting and legal, now in an amazing musician, entrenched in technology and Microsoft technology, and. Uh, really just yeah, proud to, to have see four bass doing. players in the room tonight. Oh my god. And only one of them can really play and that's Scott. Yeah, <laughs> Scott's also a progressive bass player. It's uh you're a very special individual and I'm very glad that we were talking about networking earlier. Yes. I, I did that. I went out I'm almost sixty years old. Okay. I bought a Synology NAS, which is a network area storage. Right. Twenty seven terabytes. Right. In wow, my house. That's big. Yeah, three that Raspberry Pis. Very good. Two of them are running an open media pool with uh, yeah. uh, media on Which he sends me stuff all the time, which I download from. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, now I'm, I'm going to be getting a server soon. Yeah. Nice. Going I have all my Amazon uh, cloud nice. CBTs. Thanks for this. Now, you don't Scott. necessarily have to go as far us. as Scott did. Right. But Scott, that's great. That that's is. an awesome yeah. network. Um, you can do as simple as what Rick said. You can get yourself a powerful laptop or a powerful desktop, run yeah. some VM on it. Put a couple of different virtual desktops. You can mm -hmm. do a virtual Linux setup, a virtual Windows setup, and you can practice that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying you have to go out and spend tens of thousands of dollars on a home network. Well, some of the guys that, that I've worked with, that you you know, with on my team mm -hmm. at my company, they've they've got like you know they've taken home Intel servers from you know right. from, from a data center that have been you know decommissioned, uh, decommissioned, decommissioned. and whatever. Right. And you know they've got them running at home. You know, to be honest with you, I'm not going to sit there and run a bunch of Dell servers, you know, in my house. You know, to me, that's like, you know, I to do it in the cloud. Well, uh, the most but expensive thing that I've got is what? was the Synology. Yeah. yeah. Everything else was piecemeal. It was right. given to me, and then oh, I sure. took it and I. But Scott, you, you're mine. loving it. We, we yeah. talk about it. You, you have fun with it. You're a technologist. We saw someone the other day who's never seen Windows who's never installed the router and they're looking at um, and they're looking at becoming an, a cybersecurity specialist you, have to know you know you look at where all of us are really into it. we're doing it for fun we we breathe this stuff it's a little discouraging to me and this is why I'm going on and on about it because we see interns that come to me it can spell the words and have no idea what it does anybody can know what it has no what idea what it does is. You can say, you can throw acronyms all over the place. Hi, oh, Morgan. hi, Dad. <laughs> hi, hi, Morgan. Hi, my, Morgan. My, my daughter's watching. Hi, how are you? You can throw acronyms all over the place. At the end of the day, do you know what it is? You know, it's funny you say exactly. that, Scott, because exactly. and every company will have their own acronyms. Yeah, that's so true. So not exactly. only do you have to know industry ac acronyms, but yeah. you're going to have to learn a company's company acronyms. Company specific acronyms. acronyms. And sure. it's, it's an interesting story. When I was interviewing hey, for my current position, 
one of the questions I was asked was a, a fleet of acronyms yeah. in which I turned to the interviewer and I said, uh, unless you put it in context, I'm not going to be able to tell you the acronym you're looking for. So if you could please put it in context. And he actually told me no. And I said, well, I'm not going to answer the question. Mm-hmm. Because okay. I don't know if it's the acronym that you know, I'm associating with or something that's specific to you. Right. But acronyms as a whole, you know what it is. You're going to know it better if you know what it does. If you know what it does, then you can put it together. And then you yes. can, they both interconnect with each other. Well, clearly, and, and what we're seeing is, is people going to school learning vocabulary, they're falling down early. You stuck to the very end fully motivated, which made you a, a qualified person here, you know? Uh, I, I just, it's not happening as excessively um, as it is in America. So that's a real concern, you know what I mean? Well. Um, l- l- let's let's move on to our cyber news. Sure. Um, it's a quite cyber a, news. Quite a bit uh, of information here. I want to talk about a term that's sort of re- new to the industry. Um, it's a term that has some funny, interesting meetings. People may not know what it means right away. But today we're going to be talking about pre-jack, pre-jacking an account. It's something that's very interesting that you're going to see a phenomenon. And, and I look forward to hearing what you guys, uh, how you guys interact with that. So pre-jacking an account is, imagine you don't have an account at a particular website. You don't have a Twitter account. Yet you go, all of a sudden you get a text that, hey guy, I got a text from you on Twitter. Well, what happened there? Someone has been phishing your information and then opened an account in your name on that website. Yeah, it's very scary. Um, and, And unfortunately, because of the amount of information we all seem to put out on social media, those that are using social media, because we're not being scrupulous with what we put out there, it's easier for them to socially engineer, hackers to socially engineer uh, and figure out what you're about and create profiles in other areas and other places, maybe apps, um, like you said, Twitter. So it could Every be other single time I see one of those things on Facebook, and Scott, you know what I'm talking about, right? And because a lot of our friends do these things, like what kind of cupcake are you, all right? Um, uh, th- there's a whole bunch of like different kinds of foods. Two can stay, mm-hmm. which are they? You know, are these different bands? Who are your two favorites? Okay. You know, like okay. In, in all of these things, they're grabbing hacker, info on you. They're grabbing Socially information, like like engineering right you. in on you. Like, okay, this person likes this band, this artist, this kind of uh, uh, activities, mm-hmm. these kind of uh, you know. So they're getting a profile of you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny when those first started going around years ago when I was actively on Facebook, people would send them to me and they'd get upset that I wouldn't do them. Yeah. And I said, I'm not answering those questions. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just, like, I'm you not think about it, a lot of those questions were like the questions your bank would ask you. Yes. About like who your was your first grade questions. teacher exactly. and things like that. You know? That was fishing for your security That's questions right. is what that That's was. That's right. So if you notice, we, we, we were talking about the Daily Swig, excellent place for cyber news. Um, it's a great one of many resources to look at. Just notice they wrote, dubbed account pre um Hijacking the class of attack involves an attacker setting up account, takeover, exploiting motion before the victim even sets up an account. Yeah, yeah, so right. all of a sudden you go to set up an account. Oh, that exa- account exists already. Some hacker has been in there with with information they fished from you previously. That's right. And pretending they're you before you even got in there. Yeah. Pre-jacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, and they can take your pictures and stuff, stuff that you posted. Now think and think about. Boom. Think it's about right. how many times a picture they took from another social media. Exactly. Right. And think about how many times someone's like you know had a uh, another Facebook account that looks mm-hmm. just like them yes. with their pictures because they made their pictures public, or even the hacker like made another profile and friended you, and you're like, oh wow, man, this guy's a guitar player. It sounds pretty cool, you know. Mm-hmm. And so you friended the person. And now he's got access to all the stuff that you would otherwise consider private. Okay, he takes he takes all those pictures and makes a whole new profile with you. And when you say, what's the point of that, right? 
so they can siphon information from all your friends. There you go. And the so funny, the funny thing right. is, the catfishers have been doing that for years. For yes. years. Yes. And they're years. calling that a switch hitter. Mm-hmm. For example, in one scheme, the attacker session may remain active even after the victim recovers their own account. Yes. Yes. And they're sitting there and as a second account, there. and their friends are connecting. Well, which one is Rick? Exactly. And it's a crapshoot. There's a 50 50 chance you'll be connecting to the hacker. It's really funny because my old drummer from a band called XCON, which was like you know years and years ago, like mm. back, back in my deep dark past. So Sounds re- like it. really great guy, Chris <laughs> Stembeck. He was like this great drummer. Um, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine like put like I got I got I got a joke put uh, put upon me. He looked just like Jamie from uh, Warrant. Like, oh, nice. Like literally, it was a doppelganger for Jamie. Uh-huh. And so my old roommate tells me that that's Jamie from Warrant that they're hanging out in the bar. And so I go in and I, I meet the guy. So I, he, he makes a new account. People. Chris makes a new account. And I go, tell me something about our relationship that I know it's you. Right? And he just hits me back with the name of a song that I wrote when I was with the band. Like immediately I knew like nobody right, that's could have known that. That's got to be that guy. Right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. That's that guy. Yeah. Exactly. But that's the kind of thing you got to test. Like if, so, if someone's hitting you up with, let's say, a second account, okay, maybe they got locked out of their account for whatever reason. Maybe they got, you know, it got revoked because mm-hmm. they posted dumb stuff. Who the right. hell knows? Right. But the point is, is like always check, ask that question that only that person can answer. And so you know, and if you're not satisfied with it, ask another question. I can think of a couple of funny ones, but I'll leave it at that. Um, but let's just take a look at... Uh, well, I, I actually want to segue into house cleaning, if you please, want, of because course. of this, right? Yeah. So house cleaning is basically when you have unused apps out there or leftover accounts on sites that you no longer use. Let's say you switch gyms from, I don't know, like LA Fitness to Blink. Mm-hmm. You may want to go and still got LA Fitness. Yeah, your, your LA Fitness account, correct. Not only that... Maybe in your LA Fitness account you were doing online payments, so you left your credit card inside that wallet, mm. you know, or payment structure, things like that. If that account were to get compromised, the hacker then can get access into that credit card. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'll tell you the truth, as an I, you know, as a security professional, I hate to admit this. This happened to me last week with a Subway account. You know, all mm. of a sudden I'm working and I get an email notification. Now, thank God I turned on email notifications that said your order will be ready in New Jersey. In and 10 minutes. And, and I was like, about what? Like subway, it's so low For the key, right subway know? sandwich, I would take the drive. But <laughs> <laughs> and, and I agree with you. Uh, <coughs> but, but the point is, is, combos, so yeah. the point the point is, is when I called them up, yeah. they said they couldn't do anything. They gave me corporate. I talked to somebody in corporate, believe it or not. I yeah. told them when I was a security professional. And they told me that this has been happening frequently and regularly and if they got access to that account they got access to all the cards in the wallet oh. so I went to the wallet and didn't realize because I had let my kids use the you account delete, a few delete, times delete. <laughs> there was five credit cards saved in oh, the wallet man. so I had to go through delete them all make some contacts change passwords yeah. right away and then go through other accounts and change passwords as well like mm. it so, was so I, I, I completely agree with you I never thought about calling it house cleaning and it is housekeeping it is. and house cleaning. And, and, and I want to add to that, The I would say if you're thinking about house cleaning, oh my gosh, where's all my logins? I must have been yes. to a thousand sites. Consider implementing a password manager during the cleanup phase. Right. Oh, right. absolutely. Like a password vault, like a one password, password or at definitely. that yeah. time. The password vault is the enabler for house cleaning. Yes. yes. And we've and brought that up many times. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm expecting a check from the one password people to uh, the cyber masters. <laughs> yeah, I think that. I mean, I think we've earned it by now. We've, we've hawked your uh, product enough times. And, and I would suggest if you're changing passwords at that time, since you're using a password vault, make it something that's very complex. Take mm-hmm. the opportunity. Because you're using the vault, you'll be able to pull the password back up. Yeah. And you don't have to sit there and go, oh, what did I make that password again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And really well, try to rack your well, brain. Or why did right? I make it so complicated well, why did again? I make it so complicated? Because you can just copy it. and paste it. Yes. You know, and, and the way the password vault works is whatever when, when you hit the paste, it wipes the memory of what was in the memory Correct. buffer. So, like, if you do a paste again, nothing comes up. So, yeah, very, really very important tool in this day and age. Yeah. So, implementing a password manager is the house cleanup, and you got to spend time on that. Now, look, they, they say who's vulnerable? Dropbox, Instagram, LinkedIn, WordPress, Zoom. Okay, 75 basically, five different services. 
have known uh, agents that are not humans. I was told that it's possible on Twitter that 20 to 30 percent of those users are all bots. I think we're going to find that out with Elon Musk. Oh, probably, Elon. Probably in the near future since that's something that he has I've been told that I'm a bot. But wait a minute, but wait a minute. Talk about Elon Musk. If he's buying this company based on X amount of users and then a, a Y amount of users aren't even real, isn't the value less? It's going to it's gonna go up because of all the publicity. Hmm. Think about I, it. I disagree. I think he, I think it'll go down because based on that, right, Twitter's got some ad revenue and things of that nature mm -hmm. and it's based on user count, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If half of those users prove out to be bots and it's artificial, you think Oof. a lot of those advertisers are going to turn around and go, hey, I want a refund. Well, Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah, that's I want a great this much percentage. I mean, that's I, I see court battles in the near future for that. Mm, There's a newspaper in our region that was caught doing this, and uh, I don't want to mention the name in case you know they remove my stuff here. But a very known major newspaper had doubled their viewership by faking who was getting them and just dropping papers off at random houses. Oh, up wow. There. Yeah. And the advertisers sued them, but they're still up and running in this long forgotten history, guys. Yeah. People forget very easily. And speaking of houses, we spoke today about the people, had white collar crime was up with people impersonating titles mm. of houses. You won't even know about yeah. Oh, home, that's a big thing. Home title, home title home theft. Title theft. Yeah. Home title you theft. Yeah, we could do a whole we could do a whole show on home title Actually, theft. Yeah, you could do a whole show on that. I, and, I don't even and each county has different ways for you to protect your own title, which yeah. I found out the hard way. It's yeah. pre jacking to some degree. They've collected info and are starting to fill things out in your name. They used to be called identity theft. Yeah. yeah. But when they're filling out stuff and taking ownership of your logins, that's this new term they're yes. talking about. Because yeah. right. it's kind of beyond because they're not actively acting with your right. stuff. And, and what Scott area. was referring to is they're actively trying to then take ownership of your house from under you. There's yeah, cases it's where it's actually happened. It, yes. It's really, really scary. I mean, that you know, just not to belabor the point, but it's really, really scary because in most counties, to steal someone's title, it's a one-sided, one sheet of paper that they submit, and the, the, the county clerk, by law, has to accept it because mm -hmm. it's notarized mm -hmm. and it's got the proper stamps mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. which you can make all that stuff up if you know you're clever enough. How scary is that? That like What's scarier is that counties know about this. The clerk's mm -hmm. office are aware of this. Yeah. this happening. and they still okay. And it. they still okay it. What they should do by law is lock it by default. Have thirty day. You know, yes, a, a, and lock it by default. Meanwhile, well, we gotta buy title, of title of lock insurance. Yeah, instead. but that's work, yes. and we know that like a lot of state, you know, people that work in the state and the counties and things like that, they don't like work. You know, they they hate work, right? Ed? I love work. Uh, <laughs> you put him right on the spot there, right? But, but I think what happens, <coughs> so let's just have a quick logical take on this. In the private sector, everything's based on the last deal. You're judged on every deal you Absolutely. make at all times, and your future depends on how you did on the previous deal. Government takes our taxes, and there are no goals. I mean, they certainly have goals as individuals, of course, but there are no goals to achieve anything if it's in the red forever they're still okay yeah um and that creates an interesting service mm -hmm. when there's really no output unless and you know and then Is also it a service or a complacency too because well, it really creates a complacency when you know that there's no real well, well if government's a body and every four years you remove the head after a while the glue won't stick anymore you know Good analogy. That's really. That's a really, really good analogy. Good analogy. <laughs> well said. Wow. You know, and look at look at these other countries that the body stays with the head for years for family based basis or whatever. The whole lineage of the family. You know exactly, and then of course throughout history we've seen how bad that is, but um, you know. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let Let me jump into this uh, other hacking news. The uh, what does this all amount to? The winner of the hackathons. Very interesting stuff here. Um, 
You want to talk about it a little bit? You seem to have really some good information on this. The 15th annual hackathon pays out about $1.2 million for a high-impact security bug, and uh, that was, was passed between a couple of different winners. Uh, so for anybody Vancouver. that doesn't know, it's called Pwn to Own. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's interesting. They get together, they get a group of hackers together, and they try to prove zero-day exploits uh, through multiple technologies. And they actually get awarded dollars for some of the exploits. And the more complicated or easier the exploit, the higher the dollar, right? Mm -hmm. The more complicated. It, I'm not sure of the whole scale because I've never participated in it. Yeah. But uh, I know this year's winner actually got a over a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a pwn to own Vancouver closes doors on Friday, May 20th, with more than a million uh, being awarded to celebrate 15 years of this event. And uh, participants were offered the opportunity to both money and prints, which could go be towards crowned master of pawn. Yes. Look at that. Master uh, of team pawn. 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 How pawn. do you spell? Pawn. 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 Okay. Pawn. Pawn. You guys, I always have to trouble with these names. Uh, whatever. Pawn. I know English is hard pawn. enough, right? Hard, English <laughs> is hard enough. Um, um, uh, the champions were Star Labs in Singapore. Who seem to have done very, very good uh, over there. Yeah, and, it, um, and it's interesting to see right there in that next paragraph that yes. overall prize amounts amounting to 1.2 million were awarded for 27 vulnerabilities that were discovered during the event. So wow. During that one evening, during that evening, they found 27 exploits. Just new holes that were open that new they didn't holes. know were there. Yes. Yes, yes, for a competition on on in public. Isn't that wonderful? Very interesting. Very okay. sponsors from. How's your subway app? Is <laughs> <laughs> give me a sandwich. Uh, <laughs> sponsors from Tesla and VMware provided targets for the competition. Yes. So that was very interesting, and they found vulnerabilities right there. Um, just want to say, I was at a hackathon 10, 15 years ago, and it was in the years where they had to do hacking without a computer. If you remember those, mm -hmm. you can find them on YouTube. There were three years where there were hackathons, well, they and you were not allowed to use a computer. What did you use? The force? So they would get on the phone, and they'd be like, "Hi, I'm Janet social from IT. What's oh, your password?" Oh, social engineering. Social, social hacking. And and one after the other, it was almost social perfect. Hacking. Oh, sure. Nobody expected somebody to pretend from IT and just hand I things knew what over. The answer like to that was, I just wanted him to explain <laughs> it to everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, that happens quite a bit. I think that uh, phone hacking is a great, is a, is a very big way where they're getting information, adding it to the database they're getting from you. And then, um, you know, imagine sitting in the office. You don't know IT. You get a call from Jimmy. Hey, what's your password? Yeah. Your staff needs to be yeah. trained to make sure rogue agents from IT cannot penetrate. I've said that many, that. many times. Phishing emails, many too, many right? Phishing emails, emails, emails are really freaking. Freaking. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, hi, this is Jimmy from the IT department. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing some work in, uh, you know, with all the computers in your office. As a matter of fact, I think Rick has a good story about doing something similar to that. Mm -hmm. I think I told. Uh, I think you have told that story. I've, I've before. told it a couple of times on the show about me wearing a UPS uh, uh, yeah. uniform. Yeah. Real quick, it's a uh, zero day exploits for two bugs were found. Injection, an arbitrary file write on the Microsoft team found uh, by this Daniel Sung and the rest of their team there from Singapore uh, earning each team 150000 and an improper configuration against Microsoft team found by Hector also worth 150000 to find the exploit. Mm -hmm. Wow, that what an interesting thing to get into. Now keep in mind these are won by people who are practitioners and have less than done, done a little bit less schooling yeah. and more hands yeah. on, right? Correct. Nice um, side hustle, huh? Nice side, hundred fifty thousand for and becoming famous like that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the opportunities will be tremendous. Yeah, yeah. But once you, you put your parents, name on that, how, how do you oh, yeah. kids? How do how do they, how do these parents kids get it become like this instead of hanging in school for four years and well, not learning the stuff? You think about it. What do you think? You know, what do you think your kid is doing up in that room all this time? You know, like you know, it's it, to some of our kids. Yes, they're sitting there playing Xbox games or they're you know whatever they're doing, right? Um, and some of those kids are actually learning how to hack and crack, like we did when we mm -hmm. were kids. I mean, like, you know, we all were interested in that. I mean, this is the first time I ever dialed the BBS over a 33K phone line. Oh, boy. I was interested in, like, hey, 
you know, I had to use a username and a password to get into that system. Mm -hmm. How could I get into it without that username and password? Mm -hmm. How can I hack it? How can I get into it? Right. I'm uh, always interested in that. Um, so, it, it, see, some of us just have that, I don't know what to call it, curse, because it, it's definitely not a gift, mm -hmm. where you're sitting there like, you know, like Matthew Broderick in War Games, you know, looking up who made the computer in the library, finding out all the different information. He would have never came up with the with this guy's son's name, Joshua. The original social engineering, right? Exactly, yeah, right, right there. Yeah. But look what it's doing. It's it's it it uh, bonds humanity. Because anyone today, and we heard about this last week, can pick up a computer, become proficient, and start a career. If they had the motivation and, and a little well, drive let, to get there. Let's be real. Nothing's holding you back. Let, let's That's be real. Any that, same, that same thing is available if you want to pick up a hammer and learn how to be a carpenter or learn how to be an electrician or learn how to be a plumber. Or you a can, welder. Or anything. You could do Mechanic. the same thing with anything. But if you're going to be one of these, I hate to say it, one of these you know, millennial kids that think everything's going to get handed to them, you want a $50,000, $60,000 a year job or more, for not having any real skills, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, look, like my grandfather yeah. used to say, yeah. I never got anything that I didn't earn with this, Yes. right? So we've all worked our butts off through our careers and everything, and and we can honestly say that. We look up, you know, maybe, honestly, it wasn't half as hard as our grandparents, well, you, you yeah, know, you're making a good different point. years. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie to you. We talked about my earliest start, right? Home mm -hmm. Depot to, to Nikon. I was only making 25 cents more an hour at Nikon than I was making at Home Depot when I started. But you were off onto a career. But I was it. off onto a career, right. and I knew I was going to progress. And now I knew that once I got in there and I and I just got the taste for and it, and I could show them what I could do. what you were responsible for went from down here to up here. Very quickly. Right? Like, And it's like you're only getting this much more money. Yeah. Right? But that's that's... You know, you having that tenacity, responsibility, that foresight to know where that road was leading. Yes. And yeah. a love. And a love for it, right? True. So that's the True. other thing when we were talking about, yeah. you know, yeah. welding or mechanics. If you love it, you can make so, a good career out of yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think anybody likes his born with a love of unloading trucks with a high level. No, but You'd welding is awesome. Man. I mean, welding. Like, hey, Listen, there was that's a that's time where I loved driving a high yeah, level. Yeah, me too. If, yeah. if that's your yeah. thing, you know, I mean, look. I did yeah. it too with recycling computers at a yeah, great time. I mean, I'm not going to you know. say it. I, I enjoyed it, man. Yeah. There was a time I worked, I worked at Price Club, which is before the Costco had taken them over. And I drove a high low in a freezer, and let me tell you, man, I can make that thing do 360s and spin I, out fishtail. So, I, so I, he's I, bringing up something <laughs> very important. When we were kids, and you've told me stories, I loved being a caddy. I loved being a cashier at the movie theater. These were incredible experiences. I got paid virtually nothing. I hung out. It was one of my best times of hanging out. Mm -hmm. No care in the world. And Went learning. Home. And learning. I was learning how to, how to how run a business, watched people how to do it. I enjoyed it. wasn't Obviously, it was early on. I worked at a bookstore. I cleaned the, the high school. Right. You know, I was a caddy. Those are great times. Why am I talking to so many people and it's below them? It's not below you to work at Mickey D's as your first job. Do you realize the opportunities you can get at McDonald's Corporation, actually? I got to tell you, I look at it as all life experiences that prepared me for the next step. That's mm. very And the true. next step. Very and true. the next step. Yeah. You made your own and, story, man. And each... Each progression has led me to something bigger and mm -hmm. better in my life and in my career. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all right, it may have started out as you know just being a guy who stocks shelves. Yeah, yeah. But then I drove a forklift, right? Yeah. Then I started, you know, taking care of the end caps and showing how we could make some profit off of changing the end caps for yes. time for mm -hmm. different times of the year. So sure. I started to learn some business in there. Yes. And right. each thing just kept going and going. Yeah, and everything leaving. builds on to you know onto different things. Right. Look, you know. My, my condolences to the 40 something year old guy or gal who's you know expecting you know 15 dollars an hour at McDonald's and you know and flipping burgers as a life career choice you know that's a job that's supposed to be for a young person learning to gain uh, life experiences and, and work experience and, and show that they sh you know just having the manager 
you know, give them a good reference and say, yes, this person showed up on time, they were responsible, the good worker, okay? That leads and you, you to, the the to the next job. And you feed the community, too, so well, it's not on. manual, and, you know? And, and, or to that person, let's say, who's 40 years old, that does want to do that. If that's what you want to do. If that's what you want to do, great. Or if you want to aspire to become a manager, at, let's okay, say that McDonald's. Okay, but let's say the person doesn't. But it they, takes motivation. That was my point I was oh, about to okay. make. It takes motivation, and it's got to be self-motivation. So is there a problem that I want to work at Chick-fil-A? I was planning to quit and maybe work there. I, I love Chick-fil-A. Yeah, me too. Uh, but, you know, okay, is that bad to look forward to I, working I, as a I, I don't know. person I mean, at Chick-fil-A? Looking forward to lunch every day? I, I think, think, I think I'm a little it would be a very different type of stress, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, I, you know, one for me, one for the customer. I probably wouldn't last too yeah, long, yeah. you know? I'm pretty sure the manager wouldn't take too kindly to that. Yeah, they'd no, probably get so pay me though. less, and I just get pay me burgers, you yeah. know, or a chicken sandwich is <laughs> right, sandwiches. you know. But, but I, I think that what we're saying here is you want to be in IT, definitely work at a movie theater, work at a bank, work anywhere, f- figure out what it's like to run a business, guys, that's, you know that, what I mean? That's what we've, you know, that's what we've pushed on the show, like, so in so many ways, so many times, right, Scott? I mean, yeah. you know, we've, we've all told us stories about how, uh, you know, or, you know, our personal stories yes. about where we've all come from, and and we shared that with the audience, and I think that's important because you know, it, we all did not start at the top rung of no. of what we're doing. You know, we we've all climbed the ladder very slowly, and it's made a, our own story. It's important stuff to talk about because you know a lot of people see us being where we are today and saying, oh look at look at these guys. You know, they're like these are top people in their field. You know, and like you know, look, we 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 are. I guess you know noteworthy, okay. Mm. But the point is, is we, it didn't just happen, okay. We started, in, at least you and I started in 1980s. I know you came in like just soon after that. You're yeah. a little bit young. You're 10 years younger than me. So, 90s. Yeah. So 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 yes. the 90s, right? So it's you know we've got this very long uh, history behind us of of building our career build, and building things in our career that really had nothing to do with our career. I mean, mm-hmm. think about yeah. it. I'm, the music business taught me a lot about business in general. You know, when I ran, you know, the bands that I ran in the past. You know, you learn by doing that stuff too. It's all it all leads to making, you know, who you are, where you're going. Speaking of where we're yeah. going. Everybody needs to make their own story and um um, we're going to go to some really interesting... You totally missed the segue on that. I, I saw the segue, and I want to <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, I wanna bring it in slowly, and we're going to switch subjects in a moment, but it's just so important for everyone to make their own story. It doesn't matter what your story is. You're here to live and enjoy life. If you're going to... You know, many people get jobs they don't like, and, and I'm very sorry... The best thing you could do is enjoy what you what you love to do. That's okay, how you make a I'm real totally career. sorry for busting your chops on that last one. That was totally worth hearing. <laughs> it was. That and, was excellent. And and I will I know add one last thing. If you are working in a in a job, let's say you're at the lower rungs in IT and you want to move to something higher and you aspire to be something higher, it, don't be afraid to search out a mentor. There oh. are people out there who will and are are willing to teach, point you in the correct directions. And no money, no money. And, and another thing, don't be afraid to make the leap of faith. Yes. You know, because I'll tell you something, that for me, to, to, I've had to make a leap of faith, and we've talked about that. We, we've had these discussions, and one of the leap of faiths that I made was when I left the school and I joined up with Ed at UNA. You know, and that was like, you know, I was, I, I referred to it, and I said to Scott many times, you know, because he was the guy that made sure it happened. Like, he, he was like, no, you're leaving the school. You're going but to work. But you left your comfort zone yeah, to he, try something. Comfort zone, I was a hamster in a, hamster, in a habit trail. I was, had my, my, my bedding. Yeah, I had my you. wheel, my water, my nuts over here. I was, like, completely comfortable. I wasn't making much money, but, Rick, but I was comfortable. I saw you. Maybe I saw something more in you than you saw in yourself at the time. Definitely. But I saw Definitely. A, a superstar. And sometimes that's what you need. People to help you out, pull you along. That's why you want mentors. Absolutely. That's why you want a coach. And that's also why you people to rely the, on. The, the, you want to have the courage to make the leap. You know, the first time Neo leaped across the buildings, you know, like uh, like uh, Cypher Matrix. said, everybody the falls the first time. Yes, 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 the Matrix reference. You know, and, and Cypher <laughs> says everybody falls the first time. Trans. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You you're gonna fall. 
you're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to wish you never did it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But, yeah. If, but yeah. then you're going to leap and you're going to make it to the other side. Sooner or later you will. And I'm going to tell you from personal experience, I have great respect for anybody who comes and reaches out. Yep. Because that shows Agreed. that, you know, you, you got over that anxiety That's to right. come and speak to somebody that you think can help you. That's right. And if they can't, they could point you in the right direction or you're willing to take that no. Okay, so Sean's Absolutely. going to go into overtime, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> A very good point. What, what Sean is saying is something that I've said is it's okay to make unreasonable requests. Yes. People actually are okay with it yes. and look forward to it. Right, guys? The answer is always no until you ask the question. That's Absolutely. correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's a great point. Yeah. You know, I hate to, to bring up an old self-help, you know, line, but when I was, you know, years ago, back in like the in the nineties, I used to listen to like Dr. Dennis Waitley and you know a couple of other these self-help gurus, and so I, you know, I got in the habit of asking for stuff that I had no business asking for. Yeah, like I did a lot of flying in one job I worked for, two jobs I worked for at the mortgage company and at uh, the neonatal testing company. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of traveling all mm -hmm. across the United States. And I would always go and ask for an upgrade to first class. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, we don't have first class on this flight. Or even if there was first class on that flight, well, okay. you, can, you can upgrade, but it'll cost you $500. I said, no, I want a free upgrade. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Once in a while, I get one. Yes, yeah. correct. And when I go to the car rental, I'd like to get the sports car, please. Oh, that'll be an extra 120 a day. I said, well, I want a free upgrade. Yes. Because you know, like, I've only like gone to you guys like how many times? Oh, my last? God. How could I ask that for myself? Ask for yourself. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's funny. My uh, Obviously, my daughter, who's watching and... Comment in the chat. Uh, it's Morgan. not just it's IT, it's, it's anywhere in any field. field. And she's That's absolutely so true. correct. So it's true, not Morgan. just the cyber masters. Yeah. It's it's anywhere. It could be a veterinarian. It could be like we talked about. Well, there's a bakery. It could be, at the, a, it could be the, at the bakery. Anywhere. Anywhere. I, I, I want to throw something unusual in there um, and then just say that I, I, I really look for what does it mean? What gives young people the motivation to say, I think. I think I can pull this off. Let me think real deep and try to do this. Well, what is a young lady like that or the sons and daughters? It's still your family unit and the love and the yeah. emotion well. that's produced from the people. It doesn't always have to be a direct father or son. It could be your grandfather's taking care of you. But that love and emotion yeah. gives these individuals... And being the a good role model for them. Well. Being a good role model to build their own story. That's true. Yes. That's true. Totally agree with that. So I can just imagine, and, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, Morgan, but I can just imagine, I've spoken to this gentleman for a couple of hours, meeting him here today, you're probably going to be president of some huge company <laughs> one day. No, that's true, that's true. <laughs> you know, and I don't even know how old you are, but, um, um, you know, certainly I'm trying to pass it on to my kids, yeah. and I see the security they have. But it can be gotten... If you don't have parents, you don't have that, ask people. Yes. There's industry experts who'd love to yeah. be that parental figure and yes. guide you and be that. Don't be afraid. It doesn't have to be uh, I've mentored forever. somebody like that before. Yeah, who, me too. You know, no didn't parents. have that, that family structure and got over that fear to ask. And I help guide that person in their career, and they're doing phenomenal. That's the, and I mean phenomenal. Yeah. Like, and this, could be proud of. You know, think about because it as, as, love as a teacher. Did, man. I've reached out to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. You, know, you see it all the time. Yeah. And, and it's it's rewarding from the mentor standpoint, mm -hmm. you know? I'm going to be oh, a vet. That's be a awesome. Veterinarian. So, yeah. so um, my little doggy gets more kisses <laughs> from the whole family before we leave the house. So, amen. The world needs good vets. It's a big deal. Absolutely. Um, you know, um, good for you, and that's awesome, you know? That's that. So um, and I know my dad and my family will be behind me and support me. God bless you. That's yeah. freaking awesome. It's gonna make me cry to read that. It's making me tear right now. You know, I, I like mean, that. I mean, imagine the feeling you're getting. Um, everyone could be lucky, very lucky to have that, and it could be found in strangers sometimes who are willing to play that role for mm -hmm. you. So I'm sorry we got a little emotional here. Which, we're also going way into overtime. Which, 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 which <laughs> leads me into the bigger. Spi Why are we all here? In my sorry, opinion, the clock Nazi. in my opinion, we're all here for what we were just talking about. Yes. To pass it on, yep. to become part of this world, a respectful individual, and teach your sons and daughters 
how to make their own stories yes. and go forward. And that's the whole me, point of this show. That's the whole point of our existence. That's why and I teamed uh, up with that. That's the whole reason why we're here. And that's why it's when you guys asked that. me, I was honored to come on and do this. So thank uh, you very much. And thank you for it. Thank that's you for it. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's a g love, you know, shooting the, the hay with uh, a, an old friend who's got more intelligence in his little finger than most people wow, I know got in that's whole awesome, body. guys. Yeah, you're, you're, you're too kind. <laughs> that's really awesome, guys. <laughs> guys, it's becoming I, emotional. I, you were I laughing. I think it really like, well. It's oh, right. We were doing so good. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, I mean, what does it all mean, right? Look at that, guys. It evolved to the web telescope. There's so many problems mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, we have such amazing stuff that makes us think, what are we all here for? I mean, I want to give you my formula real quick. If you're lucky enough to make it to 84, it's 30,296 days, 4,319 weeks. You can only be lucky enough to experience every day for the gym that it really is now look at this Rick you want to talk about this amazing feat that will make us as humans realize a little bit closer what it yeah, all means uh, what are we all here let's for let's talk here? about the James Webb telescope or the JWST as they call it uh, this is the next generation of uh, space telescopes um, it was launched on Christmas Day last year and uh, from Guyana I believe it was the, mm -hmm. the country not the town um, and uh, this is a huge 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 improvement over what uh, what the Hubble is doing Hubble mm -hmm. gathered uh, mostly visible light it also could see in infrared and ultraviolet but it uh, mostly you know mostly dealt with visible light and really the, the Hubble changed our view of the universe. Before Hubble, we didn't have a useful picture of Pluto. And with Hubble, we got a 20 pixel picture of Pluto. And yes. now I want to just put things in perspective here. As a James up the image, look at the difference in the technology upgrade. Well, th this is this is a oh, this is a picture of Pluto. Uh, no, that's a no. picture of the star mm -hmm, that they, uh, mm -hmm. they they zeroed in on to um, to uh, get the mirrors aligned. I want, you, I, want, I want you to put this in perspective. This new telescope could resolve a penny at 24 miles away. Mm -hmm. Okay, now think about that. Like, read the inscription on a penny from 24 miles away. Now, that's, of course, not within the Earth's atmosphere. That's out in space where there's no atmosphere, you know, ripples and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this thing had to wait in uh, what we call the Lagrange Point 2, which is behind the moon. Okay. So it's not being affected by the sun's rays. So it's behind the moon, it's, it's shadow, so it's there's no... So it's like, it's about as far away from us as the moon... It's about as far away from the moon as the moon is from us. Mm -hmm. So it's like double the distance behind the moon and staying behind the moon at all times. It's called the Lagrange Point 2. And it's seeking the edge of the universe, correct? What this is going to be able to do... I want First, first of all, wrap your head around this. This thing has got 18 hexagon-shaped hexagon, uh, mirrors, making a 21-foot mirror. Look at this guy. Wow. Hubble's, Hubble's mirror, Hubble's <laughs> mirror was only just under eight feet. Okay. Okay. And when remember when Hubble was malfunctioning? Yeah. And what they did is they replaced. They they put in a thing called CoStar, okay. which was like a replacement, kind of like uh, glasses, if you will, yeah. on the reflection mirror, not the main mirror. The reflection mirror to okay. grab to grab the images. So basically, so what are we looking at here? These are golden mirrors, well, and they look at this. The, the what they're made of is actually secret. They're not they're not saying. Ah, okay. we even we don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like alien design. technology. God, so it. Yeah, so alien technology, golden stuff. But but there, but but what this is is this is <laughs> this mirror is six times bigger than Hubble's mirror. Gotcha. Now. When you can not that size matters, but well, <laughs> well in, uh, in this case, in it's telescopes, how you use it. In telescopes and, and light collecting, it absolutely does yes. matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this thing's collecting pretty much only ultraviolet. Okay, so what is what does that basically mean? And if light goes across a huge spectrum, you've got the the the, the prism colors, mm -hmm. uh, what they call the visible light spectrum. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got infrared, ultraviolet on the outside, even your microwave oven microwave is light 
So your microwave oven cooks with a light wavelength that your eyes cannot pick up, mm -hmm. okay? So x-rays, gamma rays, all this stuff is just different forms of the same thing, light, okay? What this thing's gonna be able to do, Hubble right now, uh, uh, just, to, just to give like, you know, everybody who's like not a scientist a, uh, a better view of this. Okay. Um, if you could pull up on the, the website the, an image of the Hubble Deep Field image. Oh, I, I got it. Okay, if you can't, that's cool. But if you if you watch it, if you listen to it at home, something to look up. You just go to Google, search images, and you type in Hubble Deep Field. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a picture of a part of the sky that Hubble zeroed in on and did a very, very long exposure. Yeah, that was the first picture we had up. Actually. Now that... No, that was a basically a grain of sand at arm's length, and the the part of the sky that that grain of sand covered up, we didn't see anything up until then. With all the telescopes we had, we didn't see anything there. Mm. So we told Hubble zero in on this, right, right. And what it found was tens of thousands of galaxies, right, not right stars, inside. galaxies that we didn't even know about. And what we also figured out was those galaxies were billions of light years away from us. And I'm saying billions in the order of 30 to 40 billion light years mm -hmm. away from us. Now, okay, I know what everybody's thinking right now. How could that possibly be when the, the, the universe is only, what, 13.8 billion years old? How could something be 30 billion light, way, light years away from us? Well, that's because of expansion. Mm -hmm. When you think about the, not only are the galaxies themselves moving away from each other, but space itself is expanding. So now with the Hubble, we were able to look back about 30 billion years into the past, all the way, like, you know, the, the, uh, the WMAP uh, sat, uh, telescope was able to see the cosmic background radiation, which if you ever turned on an AM radio, you hear the static in the background and every AM radio that you ever listen to. Mm -hmm. Part of that noise, a certain percentage of that noise, is the background radiation of the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. That's the remnants of the Big Bang that you could hear on your car stereo today. Mm, okay? That's that noise. Interesting. And we picked up... A lot of people and, don't realize and that. And we made a that. picture of that. No, and okay? I think that's part of where the theory came from, right? Correct. Was with the, exactly. the advent of the AM radio. And they yes. were like, what is this? Yeah, they, they heard this noise that they <clears throat> couldn't get rid of. Yes. Yes, okay? it's the static and, noise. And at first, what... The, it, the, the people who discovered this background radiation, mm -hmm. yes. it was at the Horn Telescope in New Jersey. Um, oh, really? They thought oh, it was New Jersey? I didn't they, know that. Yeah, it was uh, just south of New York City. Okay. And uh, what they uh, they thought it was, they thought it was pigeon droppings inside of the telescope. Oh, wow. So they went and cleaned out all the pigeon droppings. Okay. And something I used to teach in my class, Scott, you might remember that lesson. You know, I, I, I actually You guys cleaned this. pigeon droppings in class? Well, no, they, <laughs> they, they cleaned the pigeon Clean droppings. <laughs> And subnetting. What what happened was is after they did everything they could to get rid of what they thought was causing this noise, yeah. they thought it might have been something the Russians were doing because mm, you got to remember this sure, is like the late fifties that they discovered this espionage yeah. stuff. And it was only it wasn't until like the sixties that they really discovered what it really was. Hmm. It was the background radiation from the Big Bang, like the first, like the baby picture. Mm. of our universe mm. and still was making a noise in the background. Mm. Now, what this telescope is going to be able to do, the James Webb telescope, is going to see even further back in time to only like maybe like a hundred thousand years after the Big Bang. Oh. We're going to see galaxies forming. We're going to learn more about the universe in the next 10 years than we learned about the universe in the last 50 and that's kind of scary. We'll finally it's scary because people can't even use Windows on Earth. And well, meanwhile, we're finding out. <laughs> you think about 80, <laughs> yeah. 80 to 90 percent of what the entire universe is made of is something called dark matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like it, it accounts for about 80 percent of the mass of everything we see out there, mm. and we have no idea what it is. We call it dark matter not because it's evil. Okay. Not it's because we don't know what it is. So we just we just refer to it as dark, right? Because we we have no idea. We can see it. We can see. We, we can't see it. We can see its gravitational influences. When we're looking at a star through a lot of uh, dark matter, we see what's called lensing. And you see, like the the star looks the like it's curved, right? And we know it's there, but we don't know what it is. The James Webb Telescope is going to give us a clue onto real dark detail. matter 
dark energy, uh, the formation of galaxies, mm. uh, the supermassive black holes that exist inside of each I I center of most galaxies. The dark metal. We'll get a happens. better, better picture of that. You know, is is science itself is going to be propelled unbelievably in yeah. the next ten yeah. years because of this telescope. So, so, so let me let me bring it back a little bit here. Uh, this just launched on Christmas of twenty twenty one. Twenty one, yeah. Oh boy, all right. Um, from Guyana Space you Center. You know what I was doing. How, how did Christmas. they? How did the Guyana Space Center get involved in the idea? The European about? Space Center uh, oh, set that up. Oh, yeah, okay. this is a uh, this is a, um, a joint uh, thing for the U European uh, Space mm -hmm. uh, and NASA and and a bunch of other you know third party you know contractors. Mm -hmm. It didn't just happen with NASA. It happened with the uh, European Space Agency and a whole bunch so, of other So, so over time, they've deployed different sun shields and parts down to January seventh and eighth. This thing, two sided panels, just to open this thing up, it had to get, get down to temperature, mm, right? Temperature so it was control. like you know, think about it. On Earth, this temperature was about like seventy degrees or something mm -hmm. like that. We mm -hmm. had to wait until it went down to what three hundred and seventy degrees below zero. Wow! Before the thing could even start deploying itself. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Got it. it and really so that took quite a while. That was like you know, it had to stay where you know, sitting there getting down the temperature and it took quite a long time for that to acclimating happen. yeah acclimating, acclimating to, to it, its yes. surroundings so yeah. it's taking a long time to deploy this and, and kind of get it get it all right it so is now is, is now located one point one and a half million miles mm -hmm. away from earth mm -hmm. so it's about twice the distance from uh, as the moon mm -hmm. a little more than twice the distance wow wow and uh, is it uh, when is it due to return? Is it ever returned? No, it's never going to return. Okay, it's, it's just going to return pictures for us. Yeah, it's uh -huh. going to return Isn't data that for us. A yeah. little sad. Is that a little sad that that happens? Well, you know, it's kind I'm of a cool. Sad you, you think about it, it was, it was no. very uh, goodbye forever. Very bold. Goodbye I'm forever. sorry, you know. It was very bold. Because you think about it, you know, when Hubble got launched, hmm. Hubble needed to be repaired. You know, there was honestly there was a really noob kind of mistake that the engineers made with that mirror. And it, it was something that they should have seen, is something that they could have prevented. Mm -hmm. And it was the most, one of the most heroic space adventures that we went on in many, many years, the repair of the Hubble Space Telescope. Yes. So let me ask you something. There, this is the, J, the, the, the Webb Space Telescope website, and they're releasing the first images just now. Oh, the, they have to scrub all the alien features first? Is yes, that what's going uh, on? A great, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. The Webb Telescope is going to be able to study exoplanets, which we know what about like 7,000 exoplanets, like the number just is impossible to keep track of. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we're learning about dozens of exoplanets, new ones that we didn't know about mm -hmm. every single week from the various space telescopes we have looking, the planet hunting, uh, like Kepler and, mm -hmm. and Hat and, and all those other ones, okay? so. What happens is the, the Webb telescope is going, is going to zero in on some of the, s the planets that we know to be roughly of Earth's size and composition, because okay. we can tell the composition by the light that comes blinking off of Earth it from like, the sun. Earth-like planets. And like planets. in the habitable zone, not too close, not too far. They call it the Goldilocks zone, just right, where water can possibly exist mm -hmm. as liquid, not as ice or, okay. or vapor, Yes. right? Or plasma, or something. Yeah, if you get other, really yeah. close, <laughs> kind of, kind okay. of, cool. sure, sure. But the what's really cool about this is that we'll be able to like actually photograph planets, exoplanets, in other solar systems, like not with you know, not like you know, like we're in the space station, okay, and like looking down on Earth. Sure. But I mean, you want you realize that even Hubble, the best picture it ever grabbed of Pluto was only about twenty pixels. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and when we did the uh, the flyby um, of of Pluto, it was an amazing discovery that we discovered this living planet with tectonic things going on it, uh, ice volcanoes and and possible uh, you know microscopic life. We could tell mm -hmm. by the colors and everything coming from it that 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 was far from a dead icy world that we thought it was. Okay, so what we're going to learn about these exoplanets from the, the web telescope is going to it, it it's like so so order of magnitude. Can, can like you describe? Can you you're 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 seeing a lot of different things, 
And I just want to kind of narrow it down. I don't want to confuse right, let's, the let's audience. Let's go back to the look back. Because there's a lot of bad, big things. Well, and there you go. I think it's very important to look at this diagram to tie it all together. So, so this is what the telescope is going to tell us and be able to give us a vision into the past and what's yes. going on in the universe. You want to describe this dot, this uh, image right here. Well, okay. If when you, you look on the right hand side, that is a uh, depiction of the Webb uh, the Webb Telescope, or or in a larger sense, us looking back into the you know the, the universe. From where we could see, okay, give give you an idea. From where we could see, if we take a look at a star that's let's say 500 light years away from us. What we're really seeing is we're seeing that star 500 years ago. It took the light 500 years to get here, moving at the speed of light, and it's 500 light years away. Mm -hmm. You can do the math. It's a pretty simple equation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you're looking at a galaxy that's 100 million light years away from us, mm -hmm. okay, that took 100 million years for that light to get to us. That means we're looking at what that galaxy looked like a hundred million years ago. Mm -hmm. That's a little hard, you know, like the average person, like even scientists. Yeah, you, know, that's, you think about that's a pretty big deal. Think about like you know the the, the term between million and billion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's Elon Musk. What is he worth yeah. now? About we're, we're nine running, billion. We're running a little long. It's, it's going to okay. be another few minutes. It's please. okay. <laughs> but I'm saying if even if, if Elon Musk gave everybody a million dollars, every single person in the United States a million dollars, he'd still be a billionaire. Yeah, so yeah. That, try to wrap your head over what a billion means. So when you go back and you see something that's four billion light years away, mm. that's that's every billion light years, light years. is a hundred million mm. or, or a thousand million, yeah. thousand, million yeah. thousand million light years. <clears throat> right. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. So so there's all this talk about this. There's quite a bit of information coming out about this, uh, and um, I, I'm reading a constant news about it. There's a lot you can learn about it. I mean, you have Amazon putting out stuff, you got SpaceX, and it's all led to a very interesting point in time, didn't it? Well, yeah. Something I mean, uh, that took place about a month ago. What's that? Speaking about space is these UFO um, hearings. <laughs> What'd you take on you that, know, Doc? You know, the, the truth is out there. I mean, like, I, I hate to go, like, um, all uh, Scalder and Mul uh, Mulder on everybody, Scully and Mulder on here, but. It's, uh, we, we live in a time right now that it is very evident something is out there visiting us that's not, that doesn't have technology from this world. Because I don't care what anybody says about that Tic Tac UFO or that, that pyramid shaped UFO that they talked about mm -hmm. at, with the, uh, at the congressional hearings. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That is physics at a level that we don't yet understand. Yeah, I agree with Rick on that. That's physics at a level that we just we don't have the, the math for, we don't have the comprehension for. It's not something that the Russians came up with. No. It's not something the Chinese came up with. We don't know. We don't no, know. No, we know. Okay, because I don't care what the Chinese came up with. I don't care what the Russians, I don't care what any of, any, any of us came up with. We see their technology in use all the time in the space programs. We know what the Chinese space station looks like. We know what their, sh their shuttle looks like, our shuttle. Hate to say it, the Russians had a space shuttle. It was our space shuttle. Okay, it was stolen technology look, from look, us. Look, Rick's making an assumption, Not an assumption that beings from another planet don't have U.S. citizenship papers or other. Well, that's you know, true. Listen, I mean, they'll have how to do go, you know? How do you know there's not a, a Russian citizen who's actually an alien who worked on this? So ah, double take. Okay, all right, that is possible. Mind blown. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I have, I have to give that one to you. That was good. Uh, you know, it could be, you know, it could be a Russian citizen who's really an alien. Look, there was that interview that that uh, Eisenhower did with the caretaker. Does anybody remember yes, that? Yes, yes, I don't. Okay, remember that. that actual, you know, actual, uh, report, like uh, an accounting from a Freedom of Information request. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, of President Eisenhower meeting, meeting with someone that was called, that referred to himself as the caretaker, said that there were multiple, multiple civilizations out there. Mm -hmm. now, and they never heard from this, this individual again, mm -hmm. okay? 
Of um, course, and, at that and point. And of course, it was you know, all completely <laughs> buried. At that point, you're moving to Argentina real fast. No, you, know? you know, the thing is, I don't, I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know about moving to Argentina. <laughs> let's, let's, yeah. let's think about something for a second. Yeah. yeah. Think about something for a second. Let's, we talked about millions and billions of lots of things, right? Miles. Yes. Let's think about how many, like what the possibility is. What Gene Roddenberry, when he was making Star Trek, he went to scientists and said, and asked the scientists, hey, if we had this Starship Enterprise, how many civilizations would possibly be out there? And they came up with this thing called, the, he met Frank Drake, who came up with this thing called the Drake Equation. Yes. Which basically, the Drake Equation is, in a nutshell basically says, well, okay, if we have so many stars that meet certain criteria, yeah. and if a certain number of those stars had planets in the habitable zone, and so many of those planets mm -hmm. were uh, could develop life, and as we know it, as, as we, we know, know it, at right? that time, and uh, out of the the planets that developed life, how many of those developed intelligent life? That yeah. was like you know that goes past right. amoeba and sludge. Well, right? well, well, you have to say that logic um, around this subject has been talked about for years. Well, and I just want to say so, science that fiction clouds this a little bit. Sure, sure. Uh, the probabilities is one thing, you know. I just want to point out that um, this uh, these individuals, especially Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence Scott Bray, who was uh, a leading speaker, has says none of the documented object had a attempted to communicate with the U.S. aviators, and no attempt has been made to communicate with them, he says, as they all appear to be unmanned. So it's interesting to say that the military said no evidence has been, of aliens have been found. They are arguing the point that these are vehicles, okay. but they're not talking about if it's being unmanned or flown. No conversation about aliens, okay. just fast moving okay. vehicles. Okay. Or a probe, maybe. Or a probe. Right. Let's okay. say a probe. Okay. Uh -huh. let's, say, let's say it is unmanned. Okay, here's, here's my cell phone. Okay, I'm not going to point it toward the, because I don't want hackers to yes. look at what I have on my screen. Okay, but here's my cell phone. If this cell phone was on that craft mm. and it made a 900G turn the way it did, yes, like just going straight and all of a sudden going off a 45 degree angle like this, yes. the way it did, it's 900Gs we calculated, this would turn into putty. A grain of sand. Yeah, it would just get disintegrated. We have so no idea. living or not living, what kind of technology is it? And it doesn't have a tailpipe. Yeah. There's no exhaust coming from this thing whatsoever. There's no uh, control surfaces. You've got no wings, fins, or anything. And but, it appears to move through water speculated earlier the same way it moves through air. This. It could be some kind of gravitational drive mm -hmm. or a magnetic drive, which is why I was telling Rick, if you look in some of those videos that were released, you see like an aura around that thing. Mm -hmm. energy it's field. a little bit brighter. It could yeah. be an energy field sure. or some, sure. something. I'll yeah. tell you, I invented my own space flight system. I took a, a flashlight. With, with a little pen, I went like zoop, zoop, zoop. And it the worked. same and attributes. It was, amazing, right? it was amazing. I was able to do the flashlight with a pen. Really amazing. And I just want to reply to, to Morgan um, to say that Sky uh, Skinwalker Ranch, I saw all the episodes. Um, the, you know, they're trying to be sensational there. I'm not sure what's coming out of there. But my point to Rick was how do we know those aren't holograms? Look at what they're doing. Is it possible? They're sophisticated Look, it holograms. Could be, it could be a lot of different things. Are be. we shooting at holograms? Are we shoot? Are well, we, have we shot? That's okay. not something I, I we've heard, admitted yet. I, didn't they say they shot at it in the in the UFO hearing? They talked. They said they I fired missiles at it. That. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I don't remember hearing As a matter of fact, there was one incident where they shot a missile and the thing moved out of the way yeah. the opposite way. Yeah, like it was they like stepping firing. out of the way of a bullet, the way Neo did in the Matrix. Correct. Right? You just Got out of it the way. It just went right? out of the way and kept going. Yeah. Well, I'm then telling you, that okay. some kind of intelligence, something was moving that at that well, point. Well, something well, was guiding that. Could, what do you say to all the people that could, that say that God is the answer? There could is no answer. Okay, could I could I answer the yes. religious aspect to this? Please. Okay, let's talk about the past. Let's talk about possible things. I listen. I watch you know ancient aliens like everybody else does, and Giorgio Sukolos like is very entertaining, and and everything the answer to everything is not aliens, <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, but but there are a few things that happened in the past that changed the world, changed literally changed the world. When you go back into time, some of this stuff is mentioned in the Bible, mm. and some of them caused Christianity to be 
the dominant religion of over one billion people mm -hmm. that it is today. Let's go back to Constantine. Emperor Constantine promised God that he would make Italy and his empire a Christian nation if he won the battle against, I believe it was the Ottomans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he, that day, him and all the people in his army saw a burning cross, a vision of a burning cross I in the sky. Wow. Okay? Okay. This was documented by a lot of people. Okay, it was okay. The the date was October twenty seventh in three twelve A.D. So okay. it was a long time ago. And all we have is the writings. Of course, they didn't have camcorders, all right, or, or or iPhones to pick it up. But they this is a turning point in history. He says he saw a vision from God. Could that have been an alien encounter? Could it possible? Could, it's blasphemy know, for some religious folk to. No, no, no. Think about it. Think about it. We've Maybe been trained to. Uh, yes past and no, and I can give you a different perspective. How do you know that the aliens side? aren't Christians? And I was just going to. Or Muslims. I was just going to expand upon that. Russian so Russian one Russian. of the teachings that I had heard years ago while I was studying intently was that there are other intelligent civilizations, and that God has allowed them to observe us. Would not interfere with us. Oh, so you're talking Be about the Prime Directive from Star Trek? Similar to the Prime Directive in Star Trek, because we, as human beings, were given free will, where mm -hmm. a lot of the other civilizations, including the angels, if you're very religious, mm -hmm. are not granted free will and don't have souls like we have. Okay, but let's... But Guys, so look at that image on the screen, right? <clears throat> that's the famous image that's being depicted of the... That's one of them. ...of the fighters... Following this uh, UFO thing, it's one of the unresolved issues that they have. Keep in mind that at this hearing, they validated MUFON. Yes. They talked about MUFON. The mutual UFO And network. they're saying yes. that this was seen in the sky, traveling at unbelievable speeds, unresolved issue. Yeah. Does this prove to you that there's alien life here? What this proves to me is that it's something we can't explain. Okay, uh, I agree with that. There's something we can't explain right there. There's a technology what it can't, could be. we can't explain. What it could be? Definitely could be an alien craft. It's definitely not Russian. It's definitely not Chinese. How do you know? Because How do you know? We are incapable humans are incapable of doing that kind of physics. All right, we need to take a I'm going to we want to take a vote here at some point. What percentage is it an alien foreign ship? What percentage is that manned or unmanned? Is it a foreign object made by a foreign nation? Yeah, or is it a hologram let, let's presented see. by a foreign nation? Come on, Morgan, what do you think it is? I you know, know that it, yeah, there's other on. people in the chat. Come on, guys. Yeah, tell us what you, what you guys what think What do you think about Because here's what it is. Here's what it is, Ed. And, Sean, it is up to interpretation. Yes. Just the same way the Bible yes. is up to interpretation of yeah. the person reading yes. it. Yes. And people have interpreted passages in the Bible differently from person to person. Mm -hmm. This is up for interpretation. Mm -hmm. Until we get an actual alien, and, and even, I, I would argue, even if we did have an alien landing on the White House lawn, getting out like in uh, the day the Earth stood still, and saying, wow. hi, we're from the planet Spook. You know, and, and they, we're, you know, we're here, you know, with, uh, you know, my name is Glick, and, you know, we're here to say hi. Or, or maybe, I have a better question Maybe you're here to serve man. I have a better question for Remember you. That is one? humanity ready for that? Well, That's uh, my question, not. too. Of course and here not. we are. Is humanity ready for that? Oh, they're not. And again, What's we can next? go back to, to James Webb, right? You were talking about some concepts that people just can't wrap their heads around yeah. because of distance and time and space yeah. and just how big these things are. Now imagine somebody trying to wrap their head around the answer, are we alone or not? Yeah. Was well, that's what's next? What's next for the studies? Well, you know, here's the thing. I also believe that this is priming the public up, right? Getting them Slowly ready. Slowly getting them ready right, right. for disclosure. Yeah, for disclosure. Tommy Lee Jones because said you just the told them right away, men in black. Remember when they he said, panic. a person is smart, people are stupid. Right? Correct. <laughs> it was like the great one of the greatest lines because you can sit there and talk to another person and have a conversation about stuff like this, but when you start talking to people about a conversation like this, you know, sure, everybody makes fun of George Osuklis, you know? Okay, the hair's a little weird. My hair's a little weird. Let's face it, it is. Now, didn't they have a hearing like this 10 or 20 years ago also and it was forgotten about? What's it, the story it with was, that? It was about 10, 10 or 12, 10, years, 12 ago. years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember... Uh, the, the, the the usual suspects were there. The uh, um, Nick Pope, 
was there. F- yes, to yes. Work for uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Canadian, not Canadian. The uh, UK uh, intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Linda Moulton Howe mm-hmm. was in attendance. Mm-hmm. So some very you know reputable names yes, in, yes. in the, like the MUFON kind of uh, the world. ancient alien sti- world. You know, yeah. world. Um, Look, you know, we we all just you know I'll say this we we all walk in the shadow of uh, von Daniken when it comes to this stuff. Oh yeah, he's I read I read Chariots of the Gods back when I was a kid. It fascinated me. It it, it sucked me right in. Um, it was so amazing information back then. To me, to me, I person my personal belief here is, and this is just my own personal belief, and I'm not putting it on anybody else. But yes. this is what I believe. Yes, I believe the Milky Way galaxy. Is contains way, way, way too many candidate planets mm-hmm. for life that we didn't get in just just in our quadrant, just in our quarter piece of exactly the pie. Exactly what's there within a reasonable distance from our own little insignificant little star that there couldn't. You can't just say there's no way there's aliens. Sure, but let me ask you then: the why did uh, Robert Powell? Executive board member of the coalition give mixed reviews of the hearing. Why uh, was it so unclear what the final things because are? Because no answers were given. And so, no answers so were given. So you believe the next step are there's more to come? A yes. lot more to come? Yes, I believe there is There is a heck of a lot more to come. Uh, 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 Ale George Rojas said a seasoned UFO investigator who serves as head of public relations for the scientific coalition of the UAP studies he said he hopes that the UAP issue will be taken more seriously as a result of today's hearings. Well, uh, more should have been talked about. Okay. Remember, they stopped after an hour and a half, two hours, oh, went to recess for the rest of the day. Just like our show's got a time limit. Look, we're going to go over. We're going to go over our time yeah, limit. Yeah. We're allowed, but you know they're not. You know, mm. and so like they don't. They, they can't just go on day after day after day. People have to get back to their lives, back to their jobs. They can't just stay in Washington forever to get grilled on this. Mm. And when it gets right down to it, if you listen to the to the hearings that day, there was a lot of I don't knows mm-hmm. and it's I- unidentified that's yes. really an unidentified flying object they call them UAPs now because they don't want to use the word UFO you know what's fascinating someone said we've had to keep the secret because detecting these devices is a national secret we can't let the other countries know that we have ways of detecting this device which is why we have to keep it on the DL there's a ton of reasons eh. just like that Sounds because interesting. We you know? don't need our, uh, let's say, I don't want to say our enemies. Let's just call them our competition. Yes, right. Okay? We don't need our competition learning about the technology that we possessed that can detect what's going on inside of that tic tac or that little flying pyramid. Good point, good okay. point. And, and I want to say that that's an important thing. Um, people say things and they don't realize the implications. So. You know, there's a good reason why this is kept secret. Until Every time I all see the something like on the, you know, Channel 170, you know, the, the Science Channel, yeah, and I see like inside Area 51, yes, guys, 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 I don't want to see what's inside Area 51. I don't want it broadcast what's inside of Area 51. Yes, yeah, I don't want secret. it talked about. Okay, that's secrets. No, but I do want to know what happened in Roswell. You know, I would like to know what happened in Roswell. It's far enough away in the past. That's why I would like that to know now. We, we really could. And then what if they say, well, we definitely found aliens? That would be interesting. Then what? It? Then what? That opens up a whole can of worms, Sean. Yeah, what, or what if we just found alien technology and that's what we've built a lot of our present day well, technology didn't we, off of? Didn't we kind of make a. I mean, I know that's going leap. down the rabbit hole. Yeah, but I mean, think about it. Roswell happened right after World War II was done. Yes. So right at the same time, we were getting a lot of technology from the Germans that we yes. were like assimilating after we won the Second World War. And the Germans were way ahead of their, their, their time in, in technology. Way ahead. Sure, but aliens have become, they're, they're making a joke out of it. Everywhere he sees this oh, naked sure, alien sure. who's smoking pot, like on the beach with his buddies. Like, well, why what are they, they trying want, to do with this alien party? thing, you know? I'm oh, just they're making a big fun of it, you they know? They just want to be like us. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. We're about 20 minutes in. I uh, wanted to thank Sean for coming and being on our show, and thank you certainly hope we Thanks, uh, we can have you back again and discuss Absolutely. some of these matters well, a little bit. You, Brian, you know, welcome, you yeah. know, open door. Uh, and, and I like and I like the the subject change. It makes for an interesting mix. 
Um, we, we like to talk about a lot of different things here. Um, I certainly spend time watching what's happening in space and see what planets are going to come about that we can potentially live on. Yeah. Is that something that's going to happen in the next I think 10 Elon's, years? And like Elon's another right planet we we're going to live on? We have to become a multi-planet species. Because sooner or later a rock is going to hit us and just knock us right out of contention. Mm. Can you, you imagine the later, kind of politics? going to expand and take us over. Well, that's yeah. what I say. It's going to yeah. happen in about a billion years yeah. or two. So but uh, years away. Yeah. thank you very much for, for joining us tonight. <laughs> Next Wednesday on again. a cheerful show. <laughs> um, yeah, really interesting uh, dynamics here today. Have a great evening. Thank you. <laughs>